Hello. Tonight I'll be reading to you Samuel chapter 3. Samuel warns Eli. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was laying down in his place, and when his eyes had began to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of the God went out in the ter ter tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was laying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am, Lord. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me, he answered. I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not, not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He, so he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So when Samuel went and lay down in his place, now the Lord came and stood and called, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all that, has, that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the inquiry which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the inquiry of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He answered, here I am. And he said, what is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Perseba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Okay, so that's Samuel... Chapter three, Samuel warns Eli. And uh, this was a good chapter. And so um, I, the really good point I really like where they said, uh, you know, it said uh, God, the uh, Lord God was speaking to Samuel over and over again. And Samuel woke up and then went to Eli and said, did you say something to me? And then, then uh, Eli said, no, I didn't say anything. So Samuel went back to sleep. And then the Lord God said, Samuel, and then so he jumped up, but he's thinking it's Eli. I guess they're sleeping close, uh, Samuel's sleeping close by him, and he comes in there to check on Eli, and Eli is uh, said, no, that's not me. But then Eli reveals a very important thing uh, where if God is speaking to you, if God says your name, you know, uh, uh, it's, you know if you hear God talking to you, if you hear that inner voice speaking to you out loud or in audible, audibly, they answer this. They speak for your servant hearers. 
If you hear an urge from God, you know, uh, then you should say, speak for your servant hearers. And then maybe you'll get further instruction. I don't know. And I've had stuff like that before to where I felt like God may have said something to me. For instance, a few times I say, you know, maybe, you know, a, a handful of times. Uh, but one time I believe God said to me, if I want a, if I want a good wife, go to church instead of going to the card show. And it, I felt like he said that to me a, a few times that morning. It was weird. I woke up and God was like, if you want a good wife, go to church instead of the card show. And uh, I thought, it, I thought, you know, you know, I didn't, I didn't really recognize it. You know, you know, it's to this day. I'm not, I can't say a hundred percent sure it was God, but I went to the card show and uh, instead. And so I don't know. But maybe in that instance, if I would have said when he said uh, when, when I heard the inner voice say to me, "Go to church to find a uh, you'll find a wife if you go to church today," maybe I should have said, "Speak for your servant hears, speak, Lord, for your servant hears," and maybe I would have got some clearer, you know, um, maybe some clearer uh, insight on that. But that was uh, Samuel Warren's Eli. And in the previous chapter, if you've been following around, uh, following along, uh, Eli, his sons uh, was doing all kinds of evil things. He was having sex with women that came to the, the tabernacle to worship the Lord. And his sons was, uh, you know, having sex with these women. And he was uh, going by, taking more portions of food, taking, and it was making people turn away from God. And that's the, one of the worst things you could do is turn away God's children from God, from the creator. And so uh, God's going to punish Eli and his whole family. And uh, so, and, but then about Samuel and you see, you know, everybody's starting to now chapter three, everybody's starting to see, okay, Samuel's a prophet from God. And like we've seen in chapter one, Hannah, Samuel's mother gave birth to, uh, uh, she could, she could have, she was bare. She couldn't have no children. And she prayed to God for years that if she has a son, that she won't cut his hair and that uh, she'll dedicate the son to, the, to God. And then God blessed her with a son, Samuel. So uh, he was a blessing from God. And so uh, now God is talking to Samuel directly, you know, and, and Samuel says he's not missing a word. He's, he's not letting nothing get past him. He's picking up everything. Uh, so... That's an interesting chapter. Uh, let's see. Um, the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. So Eli was from the priest class and Samuel was under, underneath Eli learning as much as he can as a boy, uh, you know, as a young, as a young man and was learning, uh, and he said, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. So in them days, you know, really God wasn't revealing his plan for man at that point in time. Kind of like maybe in today's day. In today's day, you don't think there's a lot of revelation widespread. Uh, so and that might be the similar times that uh, Samuel was going through. The lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of the God was while Samuel was laying down. And the Lord called to Samuel and he answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli because he was thinking that uh, when, when uh, God was talking to Eli, or I'm sorry, when, when the Lord was speaking to Samuel, Samuel thought it was Eli. But then uh, the priest Eli as he as he's more uh, versed in the word, he's older from the priest class, and so he told uh, he told Samuel when God uh, when God calls for you, uh, say uh, Lord, your servant for your servant hears. So I think that's really uh, interesting, and then. Uh, and then God told him that, you know, that he's going to judge the house of Eli and the priest class, the Levites, who was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And God's very mad at him because Eli's sons was turning people away from God. 
Uh, so, and Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli said, you know, speak the truth. And then Samuel told Eli, and then Eli said, uh, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. So the priest said, that's God. If he wants to destroy my house, whatever's best in God, you know, whatever's will, God's will. So Eli was a, seemed like he was a pretty decent priest and, uh, but his sons ran afoul, you know, um, so. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel has been established as a prophet to the Lord. So Samuel, everybody knew Samuel is a prophet to the Lord. So that's really interesting uh, to see. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And then so the next chapter we'll be getting into is uh, chapter four, the death of Eli. And you know what? It's a super short chapter. Let's go ahead and read it now. Let's go ahead and read it. Death of Eli. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and it camped besides Ebenezer and the Philistines encamped in Ephek. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by Philistines who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. And when the people had come, when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh with us, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people, of, so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from their, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the Shevrolim and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Philoninus, were there with the Ark of the Convent of the Lord, of God. And when the Ark of the Convent of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. Now when the Philistines heard the noise, the noise of the shout, they said, what does the sound of the great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? They Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and conduct yourself like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter and there fell of 30 thousand foot soldiers there was a very great slaughter and there fell of israel thirty thousand foot soldiers also the ark of the god was captured and the two sons of eli hope and philonites died then a man of benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head now, when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside washing, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this torment mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was 98 years old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who come from the battle and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, what happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before Philistines and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also, your two sons, Hopani and Philistines are dead and the ark of the God has been captured. 
Then it happened when he made mention of the Ark of the God that Eli fell off the seat backwards by the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died. For the man was old and heavy and he had just Israel 40 years. Now his daughter-in-law, Philonis' wife, was with child due to be delivered. And when she heard the news of the ark, God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead. She bowed herself and gave birth for her labor, labor pains came upon her. And about the same and about the time of her death, the woman who stood by her said to her, do not fear for you have born a son. But she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Echabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel because the ark of the God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel for the ark of the God has been captured. Wow. That's chapter four, the death of Eli. I can't believe they, ca they captured the ark of God. Uh, wow. And so Samuel is hearing about this. Israel went to battle against the Philistines. Uh, and this is in the Philistines. I believe Israel and Philistine is still fighting today. And this book was written like three to 5,000 years ago. And so it's, it's 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 weird to see they've been fighting this holy battle between you know the Philist. I think I'm pretty sure I have to double check the Philistines and Israel. Uh, so and then so, and then the first battle, the Philistines killed about four thousand men of the army. So the Philistines killed four thousand men. Just think if we seen that on the news, uh, if we see 4,000 Israelites die, that would be a shocker. You know, the news would talk about that all the time, but then it even gets worse. Uh, then they're asking why the Lord defeat us today before the Philistines. And then they said, let us bring the convent of the Lord. So then maybe they'll save him from the enemy. So they brought the whole convent of the Lord to the battlefield, which was a bad mistake. Uh, and the two sons of Eli, Hopani and Philistines were there with the Ark of the Convent of God. And they said earlier, uh, Eli's two sons was having sex with women that was trying to come to worship God. You know, that's really why God made them. That's why God was really mad about that. Uh, The Philistines was afraid. They said, God has come into the camp. Woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us. Who will deliver us from the hand of this of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues of wilderness. So the Philistines were saying, uh, when, he was, when the Israelites was making all the noise, the Philistines got scared, you know. Be strong and conduct yourself like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers, 30,000. So just imagine if CNN said 30,000 Israel troops died by Palestine. You know, that's, that's unheard of. If 18, uh, 215, I think, uh, whatever, 218 uh, died in Russia and Moscow, 218 people, and that's like the big, huge news. So just imagine 30,000, 30,000 dead in one battle. And you see this all the time in the in the in the in the Old Testament, 30,000, 40,000, just big numbers of people dying. Uh, and the, also the Ark of the God was captured and the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Philonites died. Wow. And then so a guy from uh, uh, then a man from Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day. And came to Shiloh, 
with his clothes torn and dirt on his face. Then he tell Eli what happened. And Eli was 98 years old. He was blind. He was, uh, they say, kind of fat, heavy. And so he was eating really good, you know, because the priest class was getting an extra portion of everybody's food. And Eli's sons was taking food. And so Eli got really big. And then he heard the news. He fell and broke his neck and died. Eli. He was 98 years old. His eyes were dim that he could not see. And told him the, uh, the ark of God has been caps captured. Then, then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seat backwards by the side of the gate and his neck was broken. He died for the man was old and heavy. So he was heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter-in-law, Fenelis' wife, was with child due to be delivered and born a son. And she named that son Ichabod, saying the glory has departed, the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of the God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of the God has been captured. Wow. So that's, a uh, that's, a uh, Samuel chapter four, the death of Eli. The next is going to be chapter five, the Philistines and the ark of the God. Uh, the Philist, the the Philistines and the Ark of God. So we're gonna see what happens next. When the Philistines got the Ark of the God, uh, that's I can't believe that happened. Uh, wow. So we're gonna read about that in the next chapter, chapter five. And so, but we see with Eli and his sons, like you do not want to do wrong, like in the in God, because God will just destroy you and your whole family. Uh, and he was just, and God had blessed the priest class more than any other class. And God even said he had elevated them so high, you know, and he was like, and the, and the priest class was supposed to, uh, you know, to be righteous. Instead, they became, they became unrighteous and it made God so mad that he killed the dad and the, uh, sons. So, uh, let's go ahead and close with a prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all you've done for me. Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for my sins as I forgive those who sinned against me. Lord Jesus Christ, please give me the strength, wisdom, and knowledge that I need to read the Bible, understand the Bible, and live the way the Bible teaches me. Lord Jesus Christ, your will is my will. Lord Jesus Christ, please enter my heart and be my personal Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, please love my children as you, as you have loved me. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the Bible and these chapters and stories as it gives us a good moral compass. And we see here that uh, God will be super angry with us if we turn people away from God by doing evil deeds. So that's, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just learn that lesson, God, and we will, just, uh, we will just stay away from wickedness and that we, might, uh, we do not want to deter anybody from the house of God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.